Hey guys, Ty the Dog Guy here with another aggression rehab. This girl comes to us from Montana with extensive aggression towards both people and dogs and cats and squirrels and other stuff. And here she is barking at Joe the first time. This is her getting out of the car from Montana. And uh, we're going to show you what we did to turn this little girl around. This is a bigger, bigger aggression case. Hey guys, it's Ty the Dog Guy here. So we've got a, uh, a new case study. We've got Mika. Mika comes to us from Montana uh, with some big issues. And so um, I don't, we've done other case studies, so I'm going to go a little bit faster on this one and not get into too much. I just want to show the process with another dog. Because we've got a couple other case studies where we show like a ton of what we do. And so, um, so again, in order to give enough context, I will give descriptions of what I'm doing, but not as detailed as before. So the first thing I need to do with this dog is start to get focus. If you saw what she was doing, you know, at the very beginning of this video where she's lunging. So we, we sat out there for five, 10 minutes. She lunged at a person, a guy, a woman, a dog. She was lunging and barking everything. This is a pretty serious dog. Um, she just loses focus entirely. What the owners have told us, they've actually even corrected it and she gets bigger, you know, with the aggression. And maybe you've seen that with your dog at home. You know, a lot of dogs are like that, that they're so intense, they get the correction and boom, they explode. And so they're like a little powder cake. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that the adrenaline never gets that high. Um, because you take the adrenaline, you add the correction and you get the powder keg. Well, if the adrenaline's not there, then we're in much better shape. So the opposite of adrenaline, the thing that you need to be thinking about, the opposite of adrenaline is focus. So if we have the focus on us or the command, the adrenaline goes down, therefore the dog can accept correction or accept communication in that point. Um, in theory, I haven't, this is, I haven't worked with this dog, um, but generally that's what we see. So the first thing I'm gonna do is start to teach her how to focus and start to teach her how to accept correction. I'm not even gonna get her around dogs in this first session like I did in our last case study um, because she's a little bit more reactive. And so um, she just needs to learn how to accept, uh, you know, just simple correction and, and learn how to focus. So we're going to do our crazy man method, lots of directional changes. Come on. So she goes ahead. Come on. The owner was complaining that, you know, even with the training tools, they can, these are their training tools. They came in with them. He'll walk for an hour and he's like the whole time trying to keep her back. So instead of trying to pull her back, come on. we're going to let her make decisions. She goes too far. Come on. There you go. Actually, she picks up focus pretty quick. Good. There we go. Come on. Good girl. Good girl. All right. I don't want to sound this. I don't want this to sound brutal at all. But I'm giving little like checks on the leash, even though she doesn't necessarily need them. The reason I'm doing that is I want her sit. Like I said, I want her to understand how to accept communication from the leash, because communication from the leash tends to send her into another stratosphere when she's feeling a certain way. So when she's not feeling that way, I've got to introduce that so that then later I can use it. I hope that makes sense. Come on. Come on. Good girl. Good girl. So like I said, there's times when she didn't necessarily need a quick tug, but I'm still just introducing it. Good girl. Good girl. Good. Good girl. And actually, this is probably a testament to what the owners have done. Come on. Because she's picking up focus very fast. And I know the owners have worked with her a ton. They just got to this point where they just couldn't get her any further. Oh, what a good girl. That's actually the first time she's looked at me. Good girl. So I hung out with the owners for probably a half hour. She didn't look at me once. Um, right there, she looks at me, her tail's wagging. We're starting to create this bond pretty quick. Come on, come on. Good girl. Good. Good girl. Oh, what a good girl. So, the plan here, come on. We're gonna work on a lot of focus work over the next little bit. From there, we're gonna start adding the e-collar so we can do the step back recall. Uh, and we'll talk more about the step back recall later. And then from there, we're gonna work in different thresholds. Um, come on. Come on. There's a woman walking that way and I could tell her focus was starting to go. Come on got to get the, the attention back on me. And so the key is, before she explodes, before she goes down this aggression snowball, the attention's back on me. So there, she just had, she just casually had interest. 
but had I allowed her to keep going, she would have thought more and more, and by that point, I would have had to use a ton of correction and it wouldn't have even worked. So, so in any case, learning to recognize your dog's um, signals are pretty important here. So, uh, uh, sorry, it's getting out of the way of the car. And so, so in any case, like I said, that's going to kind of be our blueprint over the next little bit. And so we're going to do another case study and kind of show you how we go from a dog that's lunging at everything to a dog that doesn't lunge at everything. It can be around other dogs and people and stuff like that. So stay with us. Hey guys, so we're a few more days in uh, with Miss Mika here and uh, just working on our, our case study. We're at, about to take her out for a potty walk and realize that we've got another dog out here. And realize, okay, now's as good a time as any to start working on building the threshold. So we're going to head a little bit away so we give ourselves a little bit of distance. And so the key here is focus. I know I sound like a broken record. I've probably said this a million times. But the name of the game is focus. If your dog focuses on the other thing, it might, she might not be a good girl. If the focus is on you, she is a good girl. Or on the task at hand. The task at hand could be healing, sitting, lying down whatever, uh, waiting at the door. But if the focus is there, we're in good shape. And so that first day, which was, today's Friday? She came in Monday. So that first day, which was four or five days ago, you know, at this distance she would have been, or she not would have been, she was flipping her lid with people, dogs, whatever. So what Sarah's doing is we call this priming the pump. She's just doing a lot of like quick obedience, getting the dog's attention. I don't know if you noticed that right there, viewer at home, uh, Mika looked over at the other dog and then very quickly looked at Sarah. Um, this is the power of focus. You know, when, when, when we see where the dog's gaze is, is when we see where you know, the focus is. And so if we keep the gaze, we're in good shape. There we go. Do you think you could get even a little bit closer? And so one thing that we talk about when we do this step back recall that Sarah's doing, and what it is is as she knows the focus getting on the other dog, she steps back, uses the stimulation from the e-collar to call the dog. Um, when we do the step back recall, there's always what we call the aggression snowball. So aggression starts somewhere. She's doing avoidance right now. I'm going to talk about that in a second. But aggression starts somewhere, right? Um, and it always starts with the dog just feeling something and then it's tense and then the fur's up or whatever. And so with the aggression snowball, we want to do the, the step back recall at the very beginning of that. And so um, what we start to see is we start to see a little bit of avoidance behavior where the dog's like, all right, I recognize that there's stress over there, but I'm going to pay attention to you. I'm going to feel better. Um, I'm not going to go into fight. I'm not going to go into flight. I'm going to go into avoidance. So puppy. There we go. There we go. And so we're going to see a lot more focus. The more Sarah moves around, the more focus we get the better off Mika's doing. Good puppy. So yeah, we're at the stage now, I guess, you know, because it's the first time we've had her kind of seeing other dogs. So we're at the stage now where it's time to start decreasing the threshold, you know, saying, okay, um, now that you're understanding some more focus, now that you're understanding more about the rules, we're going to inch you closer and closer and closer. Now, we've got to be careful about threshold, and that's why Sarah hasn't gone too close. We're probably... 50 feet away, um, which is a nice improvement, but uh, you know, we obviously want to get closer and closer, but we've got to do that in steps. A lot of folks want to do too much too quick and just get the dog right around other other stuff. What's she looking at over there? Wow. I don't know what she was looking at over there. Something interesting, huh? There we go, puppy. Good girl. All right, so this is where we are right now with this little girl. We're going to just keep working with her. That dog is really calm. It's a dog that's you know, finishing its training. We've got a puppy right now that's annoying as all get out. And so we're going to see if the energy of like a different dog. Because sometimes there's a big difference. Like, you know, if your dog sees another calm dog, or if your dog sees like a, a dog that's not. Uh, and so we've got a dog that's a little more annoying. We're going to see if we can get some reaction. While Sarah does the step back. was like starting to push forward with his energy. Uh, you can see right now the ears are back, the dog's much more calm. It can kind of be hard sometimes when you're looking up and down at your dog from your position. You've got to read that dog and understand what's happening. And 
So every time what's happening is that the dog starts to come off and comes back here and here, and we're using a little bit of stimulation. Now we're using a little up it, because what we don't want to do is exacerbate the problem, which is where a lot of people read online, oh, you're using college for a drug, you're going to make it worse. That can't be true. got a dog that is jumping around. So we are continuing with our little saga of Mika and working her through her aggression problems. So you saw last time how we were doing the step back recall. I think there was two dogs that we were working with, a shepherd and another dog. Um, and that was kind of out in the open. And that was at distance. You know, I don't think we got much closer than maybe 30 feet or so. And so obviously we want to start closing distance. Not only do we want to close distance, but we want to close distance on things that are more real. And so, you know, if, if this guy's keeping control of his dog, that's fine, but she's more likely to react on a dog that has big energy. So we've got a play group out on the other side of the fence here. And so we can keep things safe because they're on that side of the fence. She's on this side. We can get closer. They're going to have playful energy. And so there's a better chance of her acting out. Um, it, but, you know, we can address it. We can start to get that threshold a lot closer. So we clear back there. So I'm going to do, here, 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 good. So what I want to highlight, here, here, good. Here, 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 here. So I'm still not using a whole lot of leash. I'm just going to play with my level. Oh, good girl. I want just enough to level to, oh, good girl. Just open and give myself a little more room. Here, here. Here, here. So notice I'm not using a whole lot of leash, and this is where a lot of folks run into a problem, is using leash, dogs fight against that, right? You know, they feel the leash coming out, uh, and they, here, here, they fight against it. And there you see, she's actually starting to tune into me before I even give a chance to. I moved back and she was already with me. Here. And that time though she was moving back, but she was still paying attention. So I like to call that faux obedience. She wasn't really being obedient, she was pretending to be obedient. And so I used just a little bit of stimulation until she turned around. Here, here. Oh good. Here. Sit. Kind of, here, here, good girl. So every time that I feel like her energy is getting too much, I'm moving away. Here, here. I'm not using the leash, and this is where it's important to really set up your scenario because a lot of folks don't. Maybe they're on this trail before the dog's ready, and so they have to be pulling their dog away in order to keep the next dog safe. And so we've got it set things up and structure things so that we're safe. And this is what we're looking for. So the dogs are still there playing, but now she's doing fine. We're 12 feet away. So I'm going to get a little bit closer. Come on. There we go. So you see, as we got closer there, she's self-regulated. Now, we've talked about this before, but dogs have fight, flight, and avoidance. And that was just pure avoidance. Here, here. <laughs> where she thought about being aggressive. Here, here. So on this side of the fence, the dog is starting to play. The energy's getting up and she's wanting to do something about that. Here. Good. Good. There we go. She's 
self-regulating, I like to see that. I like to see where she's getting a little bit amped up, but then she opts to turn away. Girl. Come on. Come on. Sit. And so she's at about 12 feet and she's feeling fine. And so what we're gonna do over the next few days is kind of we'll let her marinate at 12 feet. You know, where she's just kind of here, the dogs are playing, she just, you know, she's fine. She's either calmly paying attention like this, or she's paying attention to me, either one. And then, you know, we'll do it at 10 feet, and then we'll do it at 8 feet and 6, and so on, until we can get that threshold down really, really small. All right, guys, we're continuing on, on our case study quest here with Miss Mika. And we've got her muzzled, because what we're going to do is potentially get her closer to this other dog. Now... Kind of the, the object of today, the way that we're pushing things forward, is um, we've got her now to where she can coexist with other dogs, she can go on little walks with other dogs, she's been in groups of other dogs, um, but all very calmly. And so what we're doing is we're bringing out a dog that we can bring out a ton of energy. Now if you've ever had a dog with aggression problems, you know that this is one of the big problems, right? That's that dog barking behind the fence, or it's that, that dog that's wild and out of control. And so what we're doing is we're creating that energy from this guy and uh, we're having this, you know, we're having Mika get desensitized to it. And so actually she's doing really good. Now you can tell that Mika is a little avoidant right now. Actually now her tail's back to wagging, you know, part of her avoidance is the dog. Part of it's the muzzle. She doesn't love her muzzle. And no one can blame her for that. But, uh, you know, with the muzzle on, you think we could take the muzzle off? Yeah. Should we try? Okay. Yeah. So we'll just have to be careful if we get them a little bit closer. We'll yeah, take the muzzle. Working. Yeah. Because Meek is a dog that has redirected. So the muzzle is for this dog, but also Meek is one that has redirected. You can tell with the muzzle off, she's feeling a little bit different. But she has redirected on her owners before to where, you know, she sees something and she, you know, goes up the leash at them. There you go. So what Sarah's doing here is every time the dog, every time Mika's losing too much focus, she's kind of doing our step back recall, our little patented formula there, working her away. What do you think? Can we get a little bit closer? I think she's able? And that's a little bit of avoidance behavior there. You see how she's trying to avoid him, which is great because uh, it's great for now. Because um, again, and I, I'm Mr. Repetitive, but dogs have fight, flight, and avoidance. She's the one that chooses fight. So if she's choosing avoidance, what that is, is that's a dog who's now being much more rational about her anxiety and saying, okay, I don't have to be aggressive towards it. But yeah, so like I say, for a dog, Mika is the type of dog we call a micromanager. Anytime someone has energy she doesn't like, she wants to go after it and be aggressive towards it. And so this guy here barking is like a kryptonite for a dog like this. You know, it just, it kills her. And so for her to be able to do this, this is great, you know, just great control over self. And All right, guys, so um, come on, come on. So we've got Ms. Mika here, and we're at this stage now where we're trying to get her, see, seeing how much closer we can get her other dogs. And so, you know, we've been doing work on the opposite side of fences here. We've got her muzzled up, and uh, we think we're going to take her into this group here of dogs. Um, we'll see how it goes. Now, critical thing, here, here. The one are going in the right state of mind, right? You know, so any if you've got this dog at home and your dog's like this, you know, it's tense. We don't want that dog meeting anybody at that point. You know, that dog's not ready to meet anybody at that point. It's in a bad frame of mind, and so we've got to get the frame of mind changed before we do that. So everything on her right now is tense because this is, you know, every day we're working her, we're getting closer and closer to their dogs. And so she's tense, and so what I'm going to do, sit, sit. I'm going to do some stuff to get that tension out. And so when she was tense, I called her away. Um, you know, I'm going to have her just sit, and I'm going to have her focus on me or on the command. I'm going to move around a little bit. You stay right there, camera. I'll come right back. Come on. Come on. 
So one thing that can help tension a lot is motion. You know, dogs sometimes get this analysis paralysis. Sit, good girl. You know, where they're like, I don't know what to do, and they kind of freeze. Um, and so sometimes motion can be really helpful for overcoming something like that. Mika, come on, good girl. And so I'm not using any correction or anything, any stimulation there. I'm just kind of talking to her and having her come with me. And so now she's in a little bit better frame of mind. You can tell there's a little bit of a, a little bit more calmness. Not amazing, you know. She's not like ooh, super relaxed and calm. Uh, but there's enough to where I'm going to start bringing her in here. Um, and so what I'm going to do is as I go in, come on, come on. So as I go in, we're going to go in and move. You know, I'm, just, I'm not going to let her sit and dwell about these dogs, or dwell on these dogs. We're just going to go in and move. Come on. Come on. Come on. Good. There we go. There we go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Good. Puppy. Come on. So I'm not letting her think about the other dogs. We're just moving too much. Come on. Good girl. And now that she's in the group, the muzzle's bothering her a little bit more. Come on. And you can tell there's a little bit of posturing coming from her. Good girl. Come on. But I'm keeping her occupied. I'll stop here for a second. Sit. Sit. Good. Good. And so I call this marinating. I'm going to stop and let her kind of marinate. How are you doing? You doing okay? You can tell there's like... There's this, she's feeling a little bit okay. There's still a little bit of like intense energy in her. You doing okay, my darling? There you go. There you go. Yeah. Come on. And so as she's getting that whale eye, you know, where she's looking up that corner of her eye, I'm gonna get her moving again. Come on. Good girl. Good girl. Come on. Good girl. And you can tell the body language. The way that her tail is moving, it's not this stiff movement, it's just a much more calm wag. She's she's bothered by the muzzle. I'm not gonna take it off. The other day in the video you saw me take it off because she was bothered. But this is our first time toe-to-toe -to -toe with dogs. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. This is our first time toe-to-toe -to -toe with dogs. We've got to make it safe. And so, in fact, I'm gonna call that good for our first session. I'm going to come out and explain just one or two more things. Let me get out here if I could. So like you say, even though the muzzle's making her stressed, um, we've still got to use it. Sit. Sit. And what you can see that I do is every time, I'm trying not to let her mind go anywhere. And so if we're moving, we're moving. If we're not moving, we're, we're, we're sitting or lying down or whatever. I don't want to leave a dog in this state of limbo where she's just standing there not knowing what to do. You know, a dog gets a little bit, Mika, come on, good girl, sit. But like I said, you know, that was three, four minutes and her body posture started to calm and relax a little bit. There was a few times where she was posturing. Now, here's the critical thing. If you've done the work well up to this point, it's more often than not, I don't know to put a number on it, let's say 90%, 90% um, of the time, what we're going to find is that the dog doesn't burst out. And so this is important because oftentimes a lot of folks, a lot of dog trainers, a lot of other, you know, they want to fix aggression by being like, okay, be aggressive dog and let's correct it. You know, let's use a leash, let's use an e-collar, whatever, let's correct that. And what we want to do is we want to put the foundation down first to where as the dog gets around other dogs, they're feeling comfortable enough where they can take it. And so like I said, what we want is for her to kind of marinate in that sensation over and over and over, and get around these dogs time and time again and realize, hey, nothing bad ever happens. And so She's probably going to be wearing this muzzle around other dogs for the next, you know, many, many times that we have around dogs. Um, by the time she goes home, she'll be off muzzle. Now with her owners, she'll probably be back on muzzle for a little while as there's a little bit of a trans transitional period. Um, but yeah, like I say, considering where she was, you know, to where she was super aggressive, wanting to go after everyone, everything, um, things like that, there's still some tension. Uh, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the muzzle off. I want to be careful, in fact, a little muzzle etiquette here, I want to be careful to not like put the muzzle on, go in group, take it off when she comes out because then she's like, hey, that stupid muzzle, every time that thing goes on, I got to be around dogs, it's stressful. And so I let her out, I let her think for a couple minutes and then the muzzle comes off. 
So like I said, you can tell a lot of her stress is mus muzzle related because she's like, ooh, I feel a lot better now. Sit, sit, good girl, good girl. And so I think once we finally do bring her in the group off muzzle, she's gonna be a lot better. Uh, you know, she's gonna be, she's gonna look a lot more natural, look, look a lot um, more calm. Hey guys, so we are, we're doing our first off leash session with Mika around other dogs. Come on, Mika, Mika. And there's a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of nervousness, her fur's up a little bit, you might not be able to see it on camera. Uh, hey, 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 no, 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 don't take that off. Uh, but this is our first time going completely off leash. What we're seeing is she's kind of wanting to interact with other dogs. Hey, hey, hey. She's kind of wanting to interact. She does not like that muzzle too much. But um, you can tell because she's never really done this, she's weird about it. And so she postures in a funny way. And so what we're doing is kind of just let her deal, kind of let her work through it. If I see her start to pay too much attention, I just come and use a little bit of body language and, and kind of block her out of the way. No real correction or anything like that. I know, I know. Come on, come on. But the nice part is like it's, <laughs> it's really itching that a lot, isn't she? Uh, but the nice part is I'm not handling her. I don't have the leash. She's really on her own. So it's just one more little layer of her deciding how to make choices. Uh, come on, come on, buddy. Mika, hi, Mika. Um, and it's also allowing for a more real scenario and setup where um, dogs are just coming right up to her. I'm not controlling what they're doing. I'm not controlling what she's doing. She's in a lot of control right now. Now, obviously, she's bothered by the muzzle, but you can tell the body language we have is a little bit excited. You know, that tail's going a little, well, now it's kind of calming down. There's a little bit of excitement, but overall, she's doing quite well without having to be super managed. Now, like I say, all I'm doing to manage is just kind of blocking when I need to, things like that. And so, like I say, what I want her to realize, that's kind of a good girl. That's a little bit more of what I want to see. You see how she's wanting to, you know, wanting to sniff and wanting to engage with her a little bit. And it wasn't weird. She wasn't doing it posturing or fur wasn't up. It was just, and so that's the kind of stuff that she needs. That little three seconds, she needs to experience that a bunch, you know, where she just keeps getting those, those little three second bursts of seeing a dog, sniffing a dog, nothing happens, just normal. All right, so we're gonna start, uh, we're gonna do some off muzzle stuff. We started with her own muzzle. She's doing okay. We're going to go ahead and go off muzzle. As we do, it's her first time ever being around anybody off muzzle. I'm going to be super careful. Come on. Come on. There we go. There we go. She's still itching as if she has the muscle on. I know. That muscle's so itchy. So she's actually got pretty decent body language, and that was just more of a warning right there. Come on. There we go. There we go. But yeah, I, 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 there's no fur going up. She's got a casualness in her body language. That's, that's okay. Come on. She's just a little hesitant with these dogs coming right up from getting in her butt. Come on. Come on, buddy. Huh. Come on, Miss Mika. Nice. Come on. Sit. Good. Good. There we go. And there she wanted to sniff, but I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't allowing her too much. So I just kind of got in between, not a correction or anything, just kind of owned that space. Okay, guys, so this is one of the last videos we're going to do with the big girl here. Um, I kind of want to give you a game plan, so, so you know we're going to take the training as far as this goes. 
we've got her around a lot of other dogs and she's doing really good with them. You want to remember, when you're getting her with other dogs, you want to follow the circle. No meeting within five minutes, no meeting on a tight leash. It has to be neutral territory where they're meeting and also no like height and energy. You don't want any buddy or any dog hyper uh, causing more excitement. So, so we have some dogs in here, so I kind of wanted to show you how I take you in a group of dogs. Now, the way that you do this once she's home to you, because it is going to take a couple months of you being, you know, like giving her lots of information and guiding her. Um, before you even meet dogs, I want to have things really established in your home. So I want you to be able to come near her without her reacting, and have dogs come near her without her reacting. So they're going to have you follow me into here, and we'll just have her around this other group of dogs. Okay. Um, so, so when we get here, first of all, we want to read her body language. So if I bring her up to the fence, and I see that she's like overly concerned or fixated on these dogs, right off the bat, we're not going to be meeting in that state of mind. So, so this is a little bit of a stress yawn, which could, could mean she doesn't know what's going to happen in here. Um, another thing to note, so so she's in a pretty good state of mind. Um, that tail almost never goes down. A lot of dogs all wait for the tail to go down. With her, she always carries it out the tail like that. Um, and and that's exactly what it is. Like it's it's alpha, like she's trying to show like social hierarchy status. Um, just as importantly as her is what these other dogs are doing. They have very, very little interest in her. So, so that lets her take them in without being pressured or needing to feel reactive or anything like that. So once we come into the, into the room, okay. First of all, I'm going to be using obedience. So she's going to either be in a heel or a down or or some some command until until we feel good. Yeah. Now, I want her to be able to show passing interest in these other dogs, but as it is right now, um, I'm going to pretty much control control everything. So I'm not going to let her sniff sniff butts and circle with other dogs or anything like that. I'm just kind of calling the shots here. Now, I don't know if you saw that interaction. So this dog is the dog that she just sniffed. Yeah is very stable and, and socially does awesome job. So when they came up together, she was a little bit dumb over that dog and that dog kind of went submissive and went around her. Those are the kind of dogs she needs to be meeting for the next little while. There's, there's, nobody has any business getting her around a socially dominant, a socially exuberant, a reactive, or a hyper dog at this point. They need to be sedate dogs like this that that can let her take in other dogs without needing to be reactive. So, um, so again, just, just like with kids, we choose choose their friends. Okay. Now, as, as she's around these dogs more and more, we can allow her more and more freedom. Uh, but I want for the first couple minutes for us to be controlling this interaction. So if you if you have some friends that you want to go on a hike with. Um, um, you don't just let your dogs jump out of the car and run up to each other and meet. You want to first go go a couple miles, let them show passing interest, smell each other a little bit, and come away before we take off the leash and say, okay, run around and be friends and be free. So we always want to take that precaution with her. She's very active, very um, gets very stimulated, so it'll be it'll be easy to to have her overdo it with these dogs. So again, here on the side of caution, here on the side of taking things slow. Come here, dogs. Good. 